Sauce Gang, and welcome back to the channel. Hot Sauce Beats here with another dope reaction for you. Well, welcome to the weekend, and we are kicking things off right because Matt Pat over at Game Theory just dropped a brand new Pokemon video, and we are going to peep it out, and it is called Who Does Ash Marry? I don't know. Who are we going to find out? Who do you think it is, Matt Pat? I'm pretty stoked for this. This is actually going to be my first uh, Game Theory Pokemon video. So I'm expanding. We're opening up our Horizons chat, and I hope you guys are ready. But before we jump in this video, make sure you show Matt Pat over at Game Theory some love by subscribing to his channel. And if you enjoyed my reaction, please help support the channel by smashing that subscribe and like button. It's absolutely free, and it greatly helps out the channel. But enough talking. Let's get to reacting and roll that ball message. Hot sauce beats is finally here. Hot sauce beats is finally here. Eat, sleep, make beats. Eat, sleep, make beats. Hot sauce beats. Woo -hoo. It's time. I hope y'all are ready. Let's go. Boom. Well, I guess it's finally time to say goodbye. Wow, I, I, I can't really believe it. I We've been through so much either. together, trying to figure out how old you are, who your father is, think, even what- Let me know if we should also peep out, on top of doing his FNAF videos, peep out some of the Pokemon ones too. Cause as you guys know, chat, we love Pokemon on this channel. You know, flexing some alt arts, no big deal. What level your Pikachu is. It's weird to think that it's all over. <laughs> No, no, it can't be over. It I know you finally be. achieved your dream, no. but I'm not ready to let you go. Hey, no. I'm sure we'll still be able to see each other. I mean, if anyone's gonna figure out a way to keep talking about me. Oh, and happy uh, Crown Zenith weekend. Uh, this is the first weekend you get Crown Zenith. Let me know in the comments if you've gotten any big polls. Supposedly it's got some really good poll rates. So have fun. Me, it's gonna be you. You really mean that? Wait, what? What? What, what is this? That, that's it. I know how I can keep theorizing about you. Well, that didn't take long at all. Hey, Pikachu. <laughs> Hello, Internet. Welcome to Game, Game Theory. Theory. Show that knows that the truest of Pokemon masters are the ones that catch the subscribe button. Speaking of catching, subbed, oh yo. boy, was I not ready to catch all the feels when Pokemon released their newest trailer. After nine regions, 52 badges, is, 83 is Pokemon, in the new one? so long as you count 30 Tauros, and 25 years of being 10 years old, Ash Ketchum is finally retiring as the protagonist of the Pokemon anime. Last That's year, right. Ash finally That's achieved right. his dream and became the Pokemon World Champion. At we watch we watch Pokemon on this channel. Come on, chat. My youngest daughter, as you guys know, me and her love opening Pokemon together. We've we've taken some hits uh, due to Evolving Sky, so we've taken kind of a break from Pokemon. Um, uh, spending a lot of money on it, taking a break from it, but um. But yeah, yeah, it's, I'm very curious to see where this is gonna go. At the end of Pokemon Ultimate Journeys, which meant that realistically, there really wasn't anything left for Ash to do as a character. He Nothing. is literally the best, like no one ever was. But it's not like the anime can just end. That machine needs to keep on printing money. In other words, it, it needs, needs to find his, a new, new woman. Faces, new heroes to learn the same lesson. Have a little Ash Jr. He can have a little Ash baby and then just restart it. It's the cycle of life. It's a circle of life! ...that Ash did along his journey. And in the latest trailer, we got exactly that. We were teased a new series set in the Peldea region from the newly released Pokemon Scarlet and Violet games. But instead of Ash, we get two new protagonists, <laughs> yes. Roy and Rico. Immediately Roy. after the release of this singular Rico. image, the fan base exploded with speculation about these characters. They're gonna be mentored by Ash. They're gonna be introduced in the final episode of Ash's season. Ash is gonna be their rival. Ooh. But of all the speculation, one theory Ash has a woman. The rest. That Rico, the new female is protagonist, woman? is going to be revealed as Ash's daughter. And this isn't just the fan base wildly speculating. It can be his daughter. Or? <laughs> What'd you say, Shaggy? ...to keep Ash a part of the series. The evidence they cite is actually pretty compelling. First of all, really? Rico has black hair, at least partially, which obviously matches Ash's hair. But more importantly, she's wearing a hair clip that bears a striking resemblance to the L symbol from Ash's original cap when he began his Pokemon journey. Also, careful-eyed fans notice the necklace that she's wearing looks remarkably similar to the Thunderstone that Pikachu refused to evolve with back during the original anime. Could okay. it be that her pops, Ash Ketchum... You know what they do? They be connecting those dots. Beep, boop, 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 boop. Boop, 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 boop. 
gave her this <laughs> memento as a symbol of overcoming struggles and not taking the easy way out. Even the name Riko has been pointed out by some to be a nod to Rika Matsumoto, the longtime Japanese voice actress for Ash. And the theories didn't stop there either. Once everyone was done pinning Ash as Riko's dad, the internet did what it loves to do, good old fashioned shipping. If Ash is the father, who then is <laughs> the, the internet mother? Loves Each to do some shipping. The started throwing out ideas to prove that their favorite companion was the true Mrs. Ketchum. But looking around, it seemed pretty clear that people were just being blinded by the waifu goggles rather than the cold hard facts of science. So, you know what that means? It's time for me to break out the old paternity yeah, test. Ready let's your get some eye colors and earlobes, friends. We're settling this science. debate today. If Ash is truly the father of Rico, who is the it. mother? Let's I start by it. figuring out our complete list of potential matches, shall we? If Ash is going to be Rico's father, then it makes sense that her mother would be a character that we as fans are already familiar with. Admittedly, it could just wind up being some random girl named Jennifer that we've never been introduced to before. It ain't, it ain't Jennifer. Come on now. Come on. Now. It ain't gonna be no random character. Come on now. Four, but Come on it's now. Pretty lame. So instead, we naturally turn to the roster of Ash's many, many female companions over the course of the series. He's a ladies' a man. Romance. He's a ladies' I man. A comprehensive list of maybe mommies to find the perfect OTP for Ash. And wound up with 15 candidates. Maybe mommies. Obviously, I like that. We have Misty from the original series. I like Misty. May from the advanced generation. Dawn from Diamond and Pearl. Iris from Black and White. Serena from XY. Lily, Mallow, and Lana from Sun and Moon. Mis Misty and Marnie are my favorites. Come on now. Everyone knows that. Misty and Marnie. And Chloe from the newest Pokemon Journey series. But to be extra thorough here, I also tossed in a few long shots. These are one-off or side characters who showed some passing romantic interest in Ash during some point of the series. This list includes Melody from Pokemon the Movie 2000, as well as Macy and Angie from Johto and Sinnoh, one-off characters that developed crushes on Ash, usually after he saved their lives. Hey, you two. You hanging in there? We're fine. Thank you, Ash. No problem. Glad you're fine. So brave and courageous and so caring. You're a Pokemon trainer, huh? I guess he'll do. Here's your traditional welcome kiss. <laughs> we also have Lyra from Diamond and Pearl and Yet from XY. Rival characters who outright tell Ash's female companion for each series that if they don't make a move on Ash, they're just gonna steal him away. I guess if we're all gonna spend the rest of our lives in here, we'll all get married here. Yes, I'm a grown man that enjoys Pokemon. Shut up! I don't care. Quit judging me. Stop judging. I feel bad for the people who are adults that aren't a kid at heart. That sucks. The land of make-believe is amazing. I've got three choices. <laughs> One thing. Either you tell Ash how you feel about him, or I'll tell him how I feel. Don't oh. say I didn't warn you. Finally, we Ladies of course fighting over Ash, Ash huh? Yep, the Pokemon. If you're not familiar with this particular nugget of lore, at the end of the Pokemon Heroes Latios and Latias movie, the Pokemon Latias, in the form of a girl named Bianca, gives Ash a kiss. A move that shocks the whole gang, as well as everyone in the audience. And yeah, the Pokemon movies up to that point were considered canon. So, with our complete list of 15 assembled, or... 14. So he took the term smash or pass literally with Pokemon. <laughs> Literally! And one Pokemon, <laughs> it's time to use our greatest I, I'd be curious to see what Markiplier thought about that. Let's list the ladies and find the mother. Let's start with eye color, shall we? We've discussed eye color plenty of times on this show, so to quickly summarize, every single person has two copies of each of their genes. One comes from mom, and one comes from dad. These genes come in different flavors called alleles. Dominant alleles are for the traits that are stronger and cover up the weaker, recessive oh. alleled traits. When it comes to eye color, there are actually three possible alleles. Brown, green, and blue. If you inherit oh. a blue allele from your mom and a blue allele from your dad, well, congratulations, you got yourself blue eyes. Two brown alleles give you brown eyes, and two green give you green. Super simple. But what happens when you get two different alleles? Well, in the case of eye color, brown is going to be the dominant gene, blue is recessive, and green is just somewhere in the middle. So if you get yourself one brown allele, it's going to butt in like Jesse's wob effect. means you're likely going to have yourself brown eyes. If someone gets one green allele and one blue, they're going to have green eyes because green is dominant over blue. The only way oh. to get blue eyes is with two recessive blue alleles. Knowing that, let's then apply it to Rico. Since I didn't know that, dude. The only way to get blue eyes is from two parents with blue eyes. So you gotta imagine, though, that can't be real. Because as time goes on, people with blue eyes would just become more and more rare because the odds of two people with blue eyes mating, you know, gets less and less and less as it gets watered down, right? That can't be right. Chat, let me know in the comments. Is that true? I don't believe that. There, no, no, no. 
Since Rico has blue eyes, we know for sure that she has two recessive blue alleles. Except that already presents us with a problem. Ash has brown eyes, just like his mom. Sure, Ash may have brown eyes and still pass on a recessive blue allele to his children, but it makes the odds of him having a blue-eyed child much, much lower. Now Okay, there we go. Because Matt Pat made it sound like that's the only way you could have blue eyes. It's from two blue eyed parents. I'm like, that just, that, there's no way. That's impossible. There'd be no blue eyed people left in humanity. Or maybe like one, and they'd be like, oh, the Supreme Leader. Ooh, blue eyes. Oh, I bow down to you, blue eyes. Now, while it's true that Rico's mother could also have herself a secret blue allele, it is much more likely if Ash is the father that the mom has to have blue eyes so she's guaranteed to pass that trait on. As such, we're gonna eliminate all the candidates who don't have blue eyes. That eliminates Iris, Lily, Mallow, Chloe, Angie, Miette, and Latias. Which, we still whew, got Misty! We knocked Latias out right away because the idea still of Pokemon and humans having romantic feelings for each other would definitely be uh, uncomfortable. Wrong! Smash. Okay, the heart wants. <laughs> I love it! I love that he brought Matt Pat Smasher Pass up on this. Let's go. That's what the heart wants. It's Mark, after all. Who am Mark I? Mark loves smashing Pokemon. Happiness? The blue eye criteria also puts Macy and Misty on the bubble because their eye color is annoyingly inconsistent. Sometimes it's blue, sometimes it's green. On the wiki, Misty's eye color is actually labeled as Viridian, which is Ooh. both blue and green. So we're just going to keep them both in the running for now. So with our potential mom list cut in half, it's time to look at our second favorite genetic trait, hair color. Hair color ah, is predominantly dang it. Yeah, the Misty's presence gone. or absence of two pigments pigments in your hair. Misty's you melanin, gone. a black brown pigment, and feel melanin, can't be misty. a yellowish red pigment. You can actually think of these two as dials that can be turned up and down to generate a whole different range of hair colors. If your hair contains high levels of eumelanin and lower levels of feel melanin, then your hair is going to be a dark color. Those are just big words that have no meaning in my head. Eumelanin, melanin. Learn something new today. Colors such as black or brown. <laughs> if your hair has low levels of eumelanin and high levels of pheomelanin, then your hair is going to be lighter like a blonde or a redhead. And in okay. between those is just a whole other spectrum of color. Now, in the main image that we've seen for Rico, it's kind of hard black to tell what blue. the exact hair color is thanks to the lighting. However, looking at this brief scene from the announcement trailer, it makes it a lot clearer that her black hair is blue. black with blue underlights. That's the official term for highlights that are hidden underneath the top layer of hair. Now, blue is, of course, not a natural hair color in our world. But this is an anime. Weird color hair. It's, yeah, weird color of hair in anime is the natural color. It just kind of comes with the territory. So we're going to have to make some assumptions about the genetics of non-natural colors. You know colors. what they say Since about more assuming! more are possible in the anime ah, world, that most likely ah. means that there just must be more pigments besides eumelanin and pheomelanin. Therefore, there are more dials that we can play with when deciding hair color. There's probably a dial for green hair, purple hair, and most importantly for us, blue hair. Since Rico's hair is both black and blue, that means that the genes for both are going to be cranked up to the max. If Ash is the father that then explains the black hair meaning that we need we ourselves need a mom blue. that has blue Bye, hair misty. to contribute that half of the genes my deepest condolences to all the serena and misty shippers Aww. out there because there are only two girls left in our list that have both blue eyes and blue hair dawn from diamond and pearl and lana from sun and moon hey dane is ash your boyfriend huh ash no, no way hmm Come on, if you had to choose between the three, who would it be? Uh, uh, never thought of it. Uh, Ash! Your boyfriend? Uh, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not, he's not! He's not. So now Tell that we how you really feel, Lana. Narrowed it down to two, we need to find some feature to distinguish. Lana's a great name. Can you guys think of any other famous Lanas? Maybe? <laughs> and if you can't, that's probably good, a good thing. It's probably a good thing if you don't know any other Lanas. Famous Lanas. Which between our two female finalists. I'm How sorry! Do I'm sorry! And Lana? Well, normally I'd go to earlobes or face shape, but honestly, it isn't nearly that complicated. All we really need to do is take a closer look at their eyes. If you look at Dawn's eyes, there are three different visible colors. The whites of her eyes, known as the sclera, the blue irises, and her black pupils. Now take a look at Lana. Notice anything strange? Her sclera All is blue. non-existent. What's even All weirder blue. is the fact that her pupils aren't black, they're actually white. And this isn't just part of the weird reading design that all the characters got. 
the Alola arc. Every other lead character has themselves normal eyes. And we know it's a genetic trait here because the uh -oh. only other characters in the show to have the same quirky look are Lana's parents Bye, and Lana. her two little sisters, Harper and Bye, Sarah. Lana. It is a trait that is passed between generations. And when we look at Rico, she's lacking that crucial family feature, meaning that Lana cannot be the mother. And so we Can't come to Lana. the end of our investigation. Rico's mother and Ash's true shipping partner is, in fact, Dawn from Diamond and Pearl. She's got Dawn. blue eyes to pass on the blue allele, blue Dawn. hair to match with Rico's oh, underlife, Dawn. and actual pupils that her Truth daughter can inherit. So means it's Dawn. Yeah, it's Dawn. <laughs> there you have it. Ash and Dawn together forever. Yeah. Unless that's yeah. not actually the full story here. I did a lot of research for this episode, and the more I looked, the more I realized that the initial not premise of this entire online theory it's is not based his on is shakier than Grudon's earthquake. This whole time, we've been working with the assumption that Ash is the father, but no. It just doesn't it. make sense. I knew Let's it. Let's the hair clip, shall we? Well, the design is undeniably a reference to Ash's iconic cap. It's a hair clip. It's not a paternity test. Rico is just as likely <laughs> to have gotten that clip the same way Ash got his first ever cap. I had to send in about a million postcards to win that hat. You know what else that hair clip looks like? The antenna of an ore beetle. Maybe that's who the real father is. Pass. No accounting for taste, I suppose. And what about that or Thunderstone necklace that supposedly came from the anime's original season? Well, it would make for a great story to say that Ash held on to that Thunderstone all these years and eventually gave it to his daughter as a symbol of how Pikachu and Ash got stronger through hard work. It would be a complete retcon of what we see happen in the story. We know <laughs> what happens to that Thunderstone. Sounds like a hoarder. If you keep something for years and years and years like that, you might be a hoarder. Thunderstone. It was originally featured all the way back in episode 14. And after Pikachu rejects it, the fate of the stone is left as an open mystery. However, it does finally show up again in episode 540 during the Diamond and Pearl arc. In this episode, Ash reveals that he's kept the stone the entire time. What's that? It's a thunderstone. Huh? You see, pika, pika. something like this happened once. And back then, the Nurse Joy from Vermilion City gave it to me. I've been holding on to it all this time in case Pikachu ever wanted to evolve into Raichu. In the episode, the pair has to face off against another strong Raichu, meaning Ash and Pikachu must once again contemplate whether or not to use the stone to evolve. I love that it's not just enough to recycle the same plot theme, but even doing it against the same Pokemon? Like, why not a <laughs> dragon Pokemon or a god Pokemon or something? Nope, those darn Raichu just always causing you to have that real existential Darn crisis. Raichu! Anyway, as you can probably guess, they decide not to evolve Pikachu you again. But this time there's a twist. Team Rocket shows up, steals oh. the Thunderstone, and at the end of the episode reveal that they plan on selling it. Hey Sunshine, what about this? Since pursuit can be expensive, let's sell it. Dang, Team what Rocket. Rocket. Need online, so we all be rich. In short, the Thunderstone is long gone before Ash ever thinks about having kids. And before you say it, no, Rico is not the child of Team Rocket. Trust me, I checked. Even the genetics <laughs> are against Ash. Sure, Ash could have a recessive blue allele, but that's a big if. And the whole black hair thing, characters with black hair and blue eyes. In I think it's going to be his next, his next Just lady. Go from Journeys or even Riley from Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. For completeness, I also ran an analysis on their face and found that, again, the likelihood of it being Ash was minimal. If you watch the episode where I revealed that Bo Burnham is secretly Dream's father, you'll know that face shape can be a big <laughs> tell in genetics. So I found the best shots of all the characters facing forwards, did some pixel uh. measurements, put them into an online face shape calculator, and the results were surprising. Most of the women ended up having the same or very similar ratios. Basically, all of them were categorized as a heart-shaped face. Rico also has a heart-shaped face, so it doesn't really help me narrow the field any. Now, Nope. Scientifically speaking, no daughters are supposed that. to get a balanced mix of their mom's and their dad's face shapes. And while Ash's measurements do lead to a heart-shaped face, all his other proportions are too big to match with Rico's. His That's what she said. <laughs> yeah, got it! Got it! It's always a good day when you get a that's what she said joke jaw is much longer, Ooh. his cheeks are wider, Ooh. and his forehead is far too bulbous. Sore. Couldn't help myself on that one. Bulbous. All of this means that Ash's head is bulbous. simply too large to be paired with any of the companions on the show in order to produce a daughter with the face shape of Rico. The science just doesn't add up. I don't think Rico's parents are going to end up having some significant lore implication. And you know what? I am more than happy with that. Well, yeah, it'd be cool to see the daughter of the legendary Ash Ketchum go on her own journey to become a Pokemon master like her father. I also think it would kind of defeat the purpose of bringing in a new protagonist in the first place. Pokemon is a story about how anyone can rise
rise to greatness through hard work and determination. Ash started hard off work as a and determination. Grew up from a small town in the middle of nowhere. He had good intentions and a great heart, but not a lot of skill. Honestly, he still doesn't have a lot of skill. Using thunder shock for everything does not a strategy make. But he has <laughs> matured. He's learned. He's grown. He's gone through more than his fair share of failures, and now he's achieved a lot his of failures. dream. To just hand the Torchic off to his daughter is falling into the trap that so many other franchises have fallen into recently. That you have to be one of the chosen ones in order to win. It undermines that core True. idea that this train- Matt Pat, seriously, great way to put it. I've never thought of it like that. It does like establish this connection that you have to be, you know, chosen in order to succeed. And that's what this kind of would have done if she was his daughter. Is that it's not just anyone can win, but you got to be part of like a, a bloodline. Trainer could be anyone. It could be you. It's scary for things to change, but it's also okay. I also know that eventually Ash is going to show up as a surprise battle for Rico towards the end of her journey because that's how Pokemon do. So, well, yes, I am loath to see Ash go. I'm also okay moving on because let's be honest, he really should have gotten with Serena or Misty the entire time. Yeah, but Misty! Hey, that's just an opinion. My, My game, game opinion. opinion. Thanks for listening. <laughs> <laughs> and hey, if you're still Let's not go! ready to say goodbye to Ash, why not check out our Man, other episode? Man, we love ourselves some Misty. How old he really is. Maybe it'll make you rethink all the shit. I think we need to peep some of these out, chat. That video is over on the left. Or yeah, I think again. Let me know. Let me. I think. I think we're gonna have to peep some more of these these Pokemon videos out. Let me bring you in, chat. I'm 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 a little disappointed. I'm not gonna lie. I thought I thought we were gonna find out Ash was in love and who his lady friend's gonna be and and we didn't we didn't get that but the video was great though i love this i love when matt pat just like drops some truth and science bombs on us and we try and figure stuff out like we're inspector gadget trying to solve the next crime mystery but uh i do agree on the fact that i think ash should be with missy or marnie i mean if i was a pokemon individual i would be with marnie or Misty. I think probably Misty. I don't know. That's tough. I like Marnie too, though. Maybe Misty. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But this was awesome, chat. Let me know in the comments which are some of your favorite Game Theory Pokemon videos. Maybe we'll make like a list of some more that we got to check out. But we're still doing Game Theory FNAF videos and new ones as he comes out. So I might have to put that on like the back burner for a little bit. And Game Theory's got a big FNAF timeline video coming out. I know Matt Pat has feverishly been working on it. So hopefully, fingers crossed, that comes out in the next couple weeks. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Again, make sure you show Matt Pat at Game Theory some love by subscribing to his channel. And if you enjoy my reaction, please help support the channel by smashing that subscribe and like button. It's absolutely free and it greatly helps out the channel. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And remember, it's eat, sleep, and make beats. And as usual, be kind to one another. And that's all I got. Boom, I'm out. Got nothing but love for the Souls Gang. G